Okay, video recap for Wednesday, July 24th, and it's uh, midweek, and uh, we're doing great. Um, beautiful day today in the markets. We got about, uh, we got eight points early on. Very nice, easy morning. And now we have 34 points for the week. Um, very good. Again, if you're not a member yet or you have not visit our room, I invite you to go and uh, visit us at the website. Go to live chat and uh, request one trial to join the room. This morning was quite easy. 3,000 was holding. Uh, the moment we opened the market, my thought was, and I posted in the room for the guys quickly to look for a counter trend to the poor high that we left yesterday. And the counter trend was given. That was the first action. And the second ac action was to go and repair that, which was really nice. Once the 3000 was fixed and, and they were defending that, it was a good move. I mean, I, I went from 3002 to 3005. I've moved to break even. I got out of 450, closed the whole position. We got some good good amount of points right there. Then I went long at 08 out of 5. Long out of 5, got out at 750. Um, then I went short at 11 on a little spike that they gave us. And I closed everything at 07. So that was a nice 4, four points, almost 5 points. So by 9 o'clock, 9.30, I was already uh, done with my trading. I did a scratch, a couple of trades, like this was a scratch. Uh, I decided to jump and I got filled uh, long out of 8.25. Suddenly the market was not doing nothing. I was just trying to look and, and see what was going on. And I just took the scratch, got out of the trade. Didn't want to take much hit on it. The trade pulled back and I was, I was really happy that I took the trade and got out of it. I took one when I got it stopped out, trying to um, short the market. Uh, and, and, and it was, you know, like one of those trades where you want to fade the market and it just goes, right? So really dumb move. And I just referred to myself right there. That was a dumb trade that I did. You do not want to short the market uh, that strong. And I'm going to give you the details. Last week, um, excuse me, since last week, I've been telling you guys how the market is setting up for today. Um, I've been saying this since Monday uh, on YouTube. How the overnight, every single overnight, which you see are these green profiles. These are the overnight, okay? During regular trading hours, this is during the regular trading hours, not a single day, right? we have been able to test those overnight lows, right? We open Tuesday, this was Monday, right? So we open Monday, we go lower, but we never got to the overnight low from Sunday night. Tuesday, we open, we went lower, it stopped right below the point of control, but we couldn't get to the low from overnight. Then today, Wednesday, we still have overnight low. And what did they do when they open? They just ripped the market higher. So since Tuesday, Monday morning, I've been telling the guys to look at the profile and read what the market was trying to tell us. Going over reference that I had since last week, one of them has been, um, well, it has been for the past two days, I mean, two Monday and since Friday, right? Uh, it was my reference of the sell-off that happened at 0950. And this was for me the go, no go line. And uh, many people got trapped trying to short the market around 0950 today. And uh, there is a reason for it. We did settle a bit, but then once, and I'm gonna go over that trade, once we bro broke through it, right? Once we broke through it on F and G, see, this is the first attempt to go higher above the reference uh, of 0950. What did they do? On D period, they came low, 
right? So D period gave us a, a pullback. I think this was half back at that point. And it was a nice setup. Uh, it was BWAP, excuse me. The BWAP was sitting at 3,005. They bought it. They went. E was an inside bar. Nothing to do on the E period. F came to tick D. G came and G gave us this poor high. But when G came, um, it was very important. They went higher and they came down to that on 950. And they tested. So now the sellers that were in control last week suddenly disappeared. Then on the I period, H and I, and you know, this was very grinding uh, most of the afternoon after lunch. We have this C, G, and H poor high. When I open, I came to, I think it was on 10, at 10 even, and they left a single contract. Um, let me see if I have my footprint to show you what's going on on that reference. Give me one sec. I think I had it right here. Uh, let me look and see if I'm going to be able to show you that reference. So here's the reference that I just made. They left one. This is a 30 minutes footprint, by the way. So right at 1150, right there, that was a nice long setup. The 3000, uh, the 3010, excuse me, the one I referring to, they left 76 against 492 buy imbalance. So they left this nice buy imbalance here and they were just stacking them, right? One on top of each other. I did make a, a comment in the room about the fact that this 3006, early on, we have left these volume notes when we open right at the open of the market. So here is your 930 and we left these volume notes kind of dead, right? And uh, the market just ripped higher. When we went to the 3011 right here, uh, I took a short back to 07 right in this area. And uh, the next period, uh, D gave us the move. And this was the long uh, to take at 05. And at that point, I believe BWAP was at 05. Let me show you quickly what the two minute did early in the morning for us. Here it is. So I have marked in my room the area that we were trading early on and how we broke out of it, came back inside again. Uh, we came to this area of support and it was bouncing back and forth, back and forth. But early on, I did recognize um, how the market structure was going on. And, and I told the guys in the room, look at what they're doing. I mean, we have this nice bull flag uh, setting up. And when we break that bull flag, there is a chance that we will probably move higher, right? I was done with my trade. 05 came to the tick, 06, excuse me, to the BWAP. And they continue higher. I did adjust my train line when they did this touch right there. And every single time they were just buying the train line. They would go, come to the train line and they would buy that train line. It was a simple, I mean, move, but it was a grinding move. This move is the one that I'm telling you, 2000, uh, 3010. That's when they left that uh, 76 lots buy imbalance. And it was just a nice and grinding move. Every single time they would pull back one or two points and, and the whole day. Where did they stop? Well, uh, 3,022. New all-time high, I believe, what, by two ticks. I'm not sure what it was. 3,017 from yesterday. It was a number that I made a reference and I had it in my room uh, for everyone to go over. And that was the weekly uh, TPO and volume point of control. The volume point of control for last week was at 3,1625. And uh, that was a number that I was looking for, right? So it was a good day, very nice day, very orderly. And um, what to expect tomorrow? I mean, 
Tomorrow will be really interesting since we are we have ECB tonight, I believe, uh, or early in the morning tomorrow. We fixed the anomalies. By the way, I have those anomalies that I mentioned yesterday. So we fixed the anomaly. Those volume nodes, they have been fixed. Uh, it's really important for us to recognize where they are. Uh, I mentioned the point of control, very prominent point of control that we did have to the top. So tons of reference, guys, that I gave you guys um, yesterday in the room. So let me get rid of this anomaly. We don't need it any longer. And uh, let's prepare for tomorrow. We left singles, right? We left, uh, I'm going to show you what's going on for tomorrow. Let me condense this and uh, we left singles in J, right? K and L. 3018, 15, and 13. Now I will go to my Slack and give you guys a reference that I posted early today in the room around 8.30, right? Even before we opened the market. When I said, what is the idea behind leaving these poor highs in the market and how, what to expect the following day? So early on, I said, and I have a picture, hold on, give me one second. I had a picture where I showed in the room how to read the poor high. Uh, so if you see the profile, right, I was referring to yesterday. And if you see the profile, we left a poor high yesterday. So the first reaction to a poor high or low is always to counter move. And the second one is to repair it. The counter move is often, you know, the more reliable of, of the two. So this morning, as they open the market, the counter move that they gave you if you look at the overnight inventory, here is the overnight inventory from last night. And here is the poor high from last night. So I made the reference and I said, listen, the first, the first reaction to that poor high will be always a counter move. Well, here is your counter move during the overnight session. When we open, right what you should expect right is that counter move to you know test or at least look for for some type of move that will indicate that one or the other reaction is done well we sat here about two minutes the moment we opened 99 and being at 3000 I just decided to go long. The minute I saw them coming back up at 3,002, that was my first trade. Next one was to go above the overnight, excuse me, overnight point of control. That was my second trade. Very mechanical, super mechanical trades. I just went one after another, after another. The next one was from 08 to 11, I believe. And we were sitting right here near that sell-off right? The 0950, the sell of go, no go line that I had on my, on my charts. And uh, as I went into the room, some of the guys got confused with that reference. So I have to just clarify as to what exactly I was looking when I made that reference. Going forward, you guys should know what to expect tomorrow. What did we do today? Well, we left a poor, oops, poor high. So I don't know how ECV will do today, right? Last time I think they ramped the market after ECV uh, decision. I don't know what they will do today or tomorrow morning. So far the market is not doing nothing, but we're not selling off as you can see. One thing that is good to point is that where we open Globex, 
Look what we've done in Globex. We came, counter move, and now they're trying to go in, repair that for low. If we open with a gap tomorrow, gap rules will be in effect. And I'll be looking for 30, 30 to 30, 32 to the top. And to the downside, I'm still looking at these singles to see if we're going to get rid of these singles tomorrow, going to repair them all the way to 3013. That would be a nice, you know, eight points, maybe seven points that you can get. We have weekly references. I mean, we have this 0950, right? Which we know in the past, this was the point where the sellers have showed up. And I will leave it as a in my charts to see if this is going to be a support in order for us to move higher to 3,100. So that's what I have for you guys uh, today. Tomorrow morning, I will be live at 9 a.m. in the morning and uh, if you would like to get the results that you've been looking for trading the e-mini S&P 500 I'll invite you to just come in join the room and and see what we do and how we do it we do it live we call the trades live we go over every single trade with stops with defined targets why are we doing the trade? We explain the trade and uh, I make sure that if there is not a single trade in the market, I'm not going to give you one. I will not be looking for trades. Let the trade come to you and you'll be okay. My 30 minutes, last night I discussed this with you guys, I think on the video, and this morning look how they defend that uh trend line um right and very early on um i mentioned how we were i think last night i did it on the video how we were in the middle uh, of this move i think this was last night so today was very nice very important look where we are now we're we're, now, we're trying to go to this stop of this expanding wedge so the reversal of that expanding wage, you can see clearly that we can take us, I mean, all the way back to 3000 and that would be nice. That would be healthy. Um, I will go tomorrow over the trades on my weekly and my monthly charts in the video. But for now, this is all I got for you guys. Uh, thank you again for following me on Twitter. Thank you for giving me all of your comments online, all of your comments on Slack. It has been great.